Hey, this is Greg Young, and I'm just here to continue along with the Mighty Moose walkthrough. In this episode, what we're going to go through is we're going to go and look at some of the profiler support that's built into Mighty Moose, in particular, our ability to bring up sequence diagrams of what tests actually do. So if I were to come into a test like the then that's here, and I were to do a control shift Y and then an S, I will actually get a sequence diagram of what this test actually does at runtime. Now this is quite a big one because it's got a lot of I enumerables and getters that are being used in it, but a lot of this stuff is adjustable. If you want to see how to really adjust and fine tune the profiler, you want to see the advanced configuration video. Now once I have this up, I can, for instance, click on one of these messages that's being passed. And when I click on things, it will actually take me to that point in code. So if I click on client here at the top, it will bring me to the client class. If I click on the .ctor, it'll bring me to the ctor of the client class. This is a very quick way of getting around inside of our code. So just bringing up a graph really quick, we'll come back to our tests, and we can bring back up a sequence diagram. I can also just start typing. And when I start, the, start to type the name of one of these, it will automatically select it for me. Um, at this time, we have not yet added it, but we will probably make our keys actually move across the top through the items across the top as well. But generally, it's quite nice to be able to just come here and navigate through code through the sequence diagram. Now, it's very important when we look at these sequence diagrams that we understand that these represent what's happening in our code only by default. If we want to get what's going on inside of, let's say, the Microsoft.NET framework, we would need to explicitly go there and add assemblies uh, and mark them and opt in to have them as being profiled. The reason we do this is profile logs can get quite big otherwise, and our happy default was only to include the stuff that you were actually having in your project. If you are linked out to other libraries, it might be very important that you go through and include for profiling those other libraries. An example of this I've seen quite commonly is in NCQRS, where even the base test fixtures are actually included in an NCQRS library that people often link to. But in order to see how to set up all of that type of information, you would just need to go to the advanced configuration video. Now, we've only seen the very basic version of a sequence diagram. When we are looking at, we are looking at the dark version. If I jump in here and I go to various, I can switch here and now we will say light. When I use light, it will bring it up and now we end up with a light version of the diagram. And let me just go back to some tests really quick and we can see that when we've got the light version, it uses a light background and things look slightly different, but the functionality is all still the same. Okay, we can also jump back in to our configuration. We can go over to our various and we can also select to do it inside of window. When I use it inside of window, I will end up with a separated window that gets created and I can do things like I would do with graphs, which we discussed in the graphs video, such as putting this onto another desktop uh, focused on the thing that I'm working on and then I can sit and I can watch the sequence diagram of the test that I'm working on while I work on it. Now, this is a particularly large test. Um, if we were to go very quickly, let's say, to one of these tests, Perhaps we might be able to find one that's a little bit smaller. No, he's rather big as well, but he's not nearly as big as the first one that we were looking at. The general idea though is I can keep this window up and while I type inside of my code, so for instance, if I were to move this window and we will move this window to be a little bit smaller, we will try to get them so that they sit side by side. And I'm gonna go all the way down to the bottom here where you can see that it's dealing with this on dependency. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to save that where I've gotten rid of that little bit of code. This is the code that's actually in the test as opposed to being in the setup. And you'll notice that the window refreshed and when we come back, that code is no longer there. So when you have these windows open, this information does actually update like the graphs do in near real time. 